I was the one who dialed 999. By the time the fire brigade got there, the flames were 40 feet high and engulfing the lime tree next to the garage. Such a shame. It was a very old tree. The residents of the close were all standing around in their pyjamas and dressing gowns, watching, offering words of support and theorising on how it might have started. I'm a nurse from the mental health ward, so I can tell when somebody's a little vulnerable. I know what to spot. They were far too young to own a place here. I figured it must have been her dad who owned it. What a gentleman he is. He used to go round there to watch music documentaries and share recipes and I'd often catch him on the way in. We'd share stories about the Rolling Stones because we shared a common love and I'm certain he had some sort of a connection, but he never let on. No, far too sophisticated for that. Dada, she'd say, like a girl, when really she should have been more of a woman by then. How are you doing, Dada? Oh, hi. Mrs. T, which is what she liked to call me, rather than my full name, Mrs. Thornley. I'm not married, but I, I think referring to yourself as Mrs. gets a little bit more respect, especially somewhere rural like this. Quite sweet, I suppose. I do know she was fond of me. How's it going, Mrs. T? Chatting up my dad again. Which I wasn't, of course, but um, she did like to tease me, which is how I know she was fond of me. In my profession, I get to meet people from all walks of life and in all sorts of situations, so I know a lot about people. He's married, you know. I'm only playing with you, she'd say. Skinny, posh little thing. She really was very pretty, but did chat too much for her own good. He's come over for a natter and a curry before I become nothing more than a milk machine, she'd say patting her bump, which really didn't suit her like it does some women. I've decided against children, but I do think it's such a shame when these young things don't grasp the natural beauty and wonder of motherhood. That's when I caught a glimpse of her, I don't know, weakness. When she used sarcasm like that. I first met her in the ladies' loo of the little chef on the A49. I was on my way back from a visit to Tesco's in Belmont where I was buying some vegetables because they have a much better selection than that at Summerfield and I needed some of their curry paste. It's much spicier than anyone else's. I often stop there on the way home because, well, it's somewhere nice to stop for a wee and it had the added bonus that the staff there are so friendly. I always give Gareth one of my little winks and he gives me one of his little smiles, our little game. The poor girl was in the lady's cubicle, half crying, half sighing very loudly. I'd normally leave somebody like that to it, but she called out and I'm pretty sure she saw my feet through the gap under the door. She was sniffing and sighing so loudly that I could barely make out what she was saying. The little chef, she said, the little fucking chef. I used to come here with my mum. Now that's something we had in common because I remember going there with my mother when I was a child and her pointing out the little air bubbles in the table's lino that if you pushed on, a tiny blob of decades old grease would ooze out and then get sucked back in again when you lifted your finger. And if you pulsed it up and down, it would go in and out like a tiny greasy hernia. This is where I find out I'm pregnant. I did wonder if it was that. I have a sense of these things. I'm a nurse, so I know a lot about people being a nurse. I'm pissed all over my hand doing this test, and I've chosen the one cubicle with no loo roll. So I passed her some under the door. She thanked me, and I think she was about to start talking again when I managed to get the hand dryer going. It was when she stepped out of the cubicle that we realised that we were neighbours from across the close. We both have a cottage down the end of a very old Herefordshire lane. I've been there many years, many, many years. She's not been there that long, which is why we hadn't met at this point. She was trying to control her breathing by blowing out of her mouth like women do when they go into labour on TV. <gasps> 
except she was shaking so much that it ended up as more of a sort of whistle and bits of saliva were arcing away from her mouth towards the mirror. She looked as though she might try to talk to me again or perhaps even ask me to sit with her and I didn't really fancy the moisture from her face near my coat so I handed her some more toilet tissue and left her to it. It seemed like a private matter and I'm certain she agreed which is why we remained amenable afterwards. I saved her some dignity, so to speak. So, there she was, six months later, huge belly, standing in her nighty. Three fire engines there were. I said to Carol across the way that it was lucky there weren't any other fires anywhere else in Herefordshire that night, given that all the firemen were at her garage fire. She was so pregnant by this point and her husband was working away in Geneva. He worked in finance. So all they could do was get her a camping chair so she could sit and watch her garage burn down. She had a little veg patch by the side of it and I remember her dad turning up and saying, well darling, your beans are very definitely baked. I don't know if anyone really noticed the joke other than me. We shared a knowing smile, of course. It turns out the contents of the garage was underinsured, so when it went up like that so fully, the insurance company started asking questions. Was what her husband said was in there really in there? The only way they could prove it was to sift through all the rubble and ashes and pick out the bits of all their stuff, bits of kayaks and climbing equipment and skis. They were the outdoorsy types. I don't think I've ever seen anything like those two. Him all muscles and smiles and her huge belly hanging out, head to toe in soot, sifting through the ashy remains of their garage, trying to prove the extent of what they were owed by the insurance company. <sighs> I mostly stayed inside that week. It was a very hot week and I'm not very good in the heat. I did see Carol from across the way bring them a glass of water once or twice, so I'm happy that the residents of the close did their part in helping them. It turns out that it was her husband who started the fire in the first place. He wasn't in Geneva after all. The word on the street is that he was also having an affair with somebody local. He went to prison for a bit. Fraud and arson. They didn't stay together after that. Probably for the best. Thank you.